Did you know that you can actually install an application that hits the skip add button for you on YouTube, or that you can actually set your screen's minimum brightness to an even lower level than what your phone normally allows you to? Well, welcome to 20 of the best hidden Android features that will maximize how you use your phone every single day. Let's get started. If you ever find yourself quickly needing to call back the person that you were just on the phone to, then you can actually really easily do so by just hitting the dial up button in your call app. If you're like me and you're tired of having to constantly type the same things over and over again using your phone, then you can actually use your keyboard's dictionary settings to create shortcuts. So I've set one of mine up so that when I type two at symbols, it will then suggest my email address as a correction. And if you use an app like Typing Hero, it will actually automatically replace the shortcut as you type, which can save loads of time. Speaking of saving time, I'm someone who tends to take lots and lots of screenshots on my phone to save information for later on. Trouble is, the amount of screenshots that I have stored on my phone is huge, and that makes it really hard to go back and find anything that I'm looking for. That's where Firefox Screenshot Go helps out. It indexes any text in the screenshot stored on your phone, which then allows you to quickly search through them using keywords. Now, most of us tend to use Google Chrome as our primary browser on our Android phones. But what you may not know is that there's actually a huge collection of hidden features that are primarily designed for testing purposes, all of which you can access by visiting the Chrome Flags menu, and it's definitely worth an explore. One of my favorite flags is called Chrome Duet, and this essentially redesigns the entire Google Chrome UI, making the browsing experience much more one-handed friendly. Now, a feature that isn't a flag, but that is well worth taking advantage of when using Chrome, is swiping left or right on the address bar to switch between open tabs, and this can easily save you a number of taps each time. But back to the flags menu, another one that is definitely worth trying out is the forced dark mode, which takes all of the contents from any web page and intuitively forces them to use a dark theme. Now, while we're at it, whilst the system-wide dark mode feature introduced with Android 10 was a fantastic addition to the OS, in reality, it's limited by the apps that have actually been updated to support it. Well, not quite. You can actually dive into your phone's developer settings to enable a feature called Override Force Dark. And this basically forces most applications to use a dark theme, even if they haven't yet been updated. Now, sometimes you might want to have more granular control over whether apps are set to dark mode or not. And for me, Google Maps is one such app where I want dark mode to be enabled all the time because otherwise it's known to be one of the most battery hogging applications that we use on our phones. You do this by simply tapping on your profile picture to head into the application settings. Then you go into navigation settings and switch the color scheme setting from automatic to night. Your phone's battery will seriously thank you. You can force YouTube to always use a dark theme as well by navigating to your account settings, then to general, and then by changing the application appearance. Dark mode in WhatsApp has been one of those long-time enigmas though, but you can access this feature without having root installed simply by sideloading the beta APK, which I will of course leave a link to down below. Once you've done that, you then head into the app settings, you tap on chats, and then you can set the theme to either dark or system default. Now, whilst we're on the topic of WhatsApp, did you know that you can actually format the messages that you sent? So you can bold your messages by using asterisks around your text. You can italicize messages by using underscores on either side. And there are even a few more options that you can find by highlighting your text and tapping the three dot menu. Regardless of the phone that you use, if you switch to using the Google keyboard as your primary keyboard, it can give you a lot of flexibility over how you use it. So if you long press the enter key, the keyboard will become a smaller or one-handed friendly keyboard. Then if you tap this icon here, you can actually move the keyboard around to anywhere in the lower third of your screen. And finally, if you tap this menu here and then the three dot icon, you can actually turn the keyboard into a floating keyboard, allowing you to place it literally anywhere on your screen. Pretty nifty. Now it's easy to forget that having loads of unused applications installed on your phone can often be the primary reason that it's slowing down. But to speed up the task of going through each and every application that you no longer use and uninstalling them, you can use an application called Unapp, which essentially lets you batch uninstall apps in one go. Split Cloud is for those times where you might be traveling with someone who perhaps doesn't have their own set of headphones, or maybe their phone battery has died, but they insist on sharing your headphones and listening to the music that they want to listen to. Well, using Split Cloud actually allows you to send one music track to one earphone and a different track altogether to the other, which in my book is problem solved. If you find a decent wallpaper that you love, it can often live on the background of your phone for weeks and sometimes months or even years. Trouble is, after that length of time, it can be really difficult to locate the original wallpaper file, let's say to share it to someone else or for when you're setting up a new phone. But using the aptly named Get Current Wallpaper, it will essentially extract the isolated wallpaper file, allowing you to share it wherever necessary. 
Using face pause means your phone can actually automatically freeze the content on screen depending on whether your face is looking at it or not. This means if you're watching videos or playing games and you're distracted or you need to look away for a moment, now you don't need to worry about trying to find the pause button. And finally, Do Not Disturb is a powerful feature that not enough of us take advantage of, I think because it feels a little too unpredictable. And so Easy D&D is an application that gives you complete control over the functionality so that you can make it behave exactly how you want it to. But that's it. If you enjoyed the video, then I have a ton of app related content across my channel, some of which I'll link as a card above and in the description below. But aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.